Hello everyone and welcome back to The Grim Reader. This is The Grim Chronicles, my weekly reading wrap-up chat. This was a big week for me because I finished three books, including a big one, as you may have seen from the blog. My comments are going to be very, very general though. Um, I'm still processing some of these readings, actually all of them in a certain sense. So my comments are going to be uh, correspondingly general. The first one I'll talk about briefly is the Audible uh, book that was the first in the Malazan series by Stephen Erickson, Gardens of the Moon. So this is epic high fantasy at its best. And that's what it is. It's nothing more and it's nothing less. It was quite well written. It was engaging to a point. Uh, I'm not a big fantasy reader. I'm not someone who gets overly excited about these big series. For example, I read a couple of the Wheel of Time books and I struggled with them. That I thought, I actually think this is quite a bit better than those. So the Robert Jordan, the early ones, I didn't get make it all the way through. I've never read um, the Game of Thrones books, the Song of Ice and Fire, but I really enjoyed the TV series. To the bitter end, I'm one of the few people that didn't mind the ending. Um, and so if this is your, if this is something you're interested in, so it's not, um, easy, it's not easy. It's quite the, the, the setting, the world building is not set up in a very kind of beginners type way. You're kind of immersed into this history and it is quite difficult to figure out. I was just... And so part of one of the caveats is that I was listening to it on audio. And so uh, I missed a lot, probably um, when you when I listen on audio, I mean, even going back a lot, I still think I miss a lot of the details of the world building. And so for me, it was sort of tricky to figure out. So this so it's about, you know, warfare in a certain sense. And then you have the, the Malazan Empire and it's the the factions that are kind of on their side and then you have all the other factions and it was quite difficult to figure out who's who even in this basic who are the two you know sides and i actually think that's part of that's actually a plus of this one is that it wasn't sort of clear cut a lot of there's a lot, a lot of ambiguity uh there's also a lot of magic and um so wizards or mages who have what they call are sort of they're in charge of warrens so these magical forces and areas that they have and that was all quite interesting and well done. So um, that's a plus. Uh, on the other hand, it is high epic fantasy. So there's, it's sort of unrelenting in its earnestness. <laughs> and I, I do think that that's a little bit hard for some of us to take. Uh, on the other, I, I mean, it was really good for what it was, but it wasn't anything more than what it was, if, if you catch my drift. So I did give it, I think I gave it five stars because it is very good at what it does. And, um, and yet... I'm not sort of weary to go with book two. I'm more like, mm, maybe one's enough. Maybe I know I kind of a little bit, I mean, I've dipped into this world, but I'm not sort of eager to get back into it right now, at least. It was a pretty long read and I, you know, so there's probably reasons why I'm not sort of that interested in continuing it, mainly to do with the fact that it's not really my comfort zone in terms of reading, although it was quite good. So that was that one. The next books I finished was one that I should have finished last week, and this is The Lover by Marguerite Duras. A very, very good book. A very sad book, very, very melancholy. Um, it's called The Lover, and at the center is this problematic relationship that she has as a 15-year-old with an older man. And she's um, a French woman, young woman with her family in... Um, the French colonies, so Indochine, um, which I guess now, what country would it be now? Cambodia, I think? I'm not sure. And so, yeah, the backdrop is this colonial, um, oh, Vietnam. It's Vietnam, I guess, I think is what, because she goes to school in Saigon. And so even though it's called The Lover, in a way it is just more about her life and her sad life and her sad family life. And you do get a sense that she's, pushed into the relationship with this older man because of the difficulties and problematic relationship she has with, primarily with her mother, but also with her brothers. The writing is very, very strong, very poetic. 
uh, it's the kind of book where I really do wish I could read it in the original because I have a feeling it would have even more force in the original language. Um, I, d I wasn't as moved as I was, for example, by, you know, the, the Carla Sandel books. They moved me even more. But I did think it was very strong. And, I did, and it is a five-star read, even though... I mean, you do have to sort of... Um, grapple with the problematic nature of their relationship and you know is it is it a mute is it abuse you know is it this man taking advantage of her and on one level of course that's what it is but there are other levels here at work for sure and she kind of brings them out quite well I think that she does get something out of the relationship um the family is very strange and there's not a lot of sort of warmth there there it is lacking in warmth which is sort of one of the other reasons why she's pushed to this relationship uh in general i would highly recommend it it's a short read it's a powerful read and yes and i'm glad i did it finally the big read that i rushed through to finish i never thought i would get through it so quickly but i did rush through the the last hundred and so pages that you see in the vlog that i made uh i'm in two minds as to whether to make a separate video about my reading experience of The Recognitions. I'm still processing. It's a fantastic novel. It's an unusual novel. It's a difficult novel. I could sort of see why this is cult evolved around it because it's almost as if, well, if you get through it, you're part of the cult. Um, and I, and in a sense, that's sort of okay, I think, because it's the kind of book where if you're drawn to it to actually push through to the very bitter end, you're a certain type of reader who likes certain types of things. And so we all kind of recognize each other. And But I have a feeling, in a way, I don't think there's any shame in a lot of people just saying, this is not for me. This is overly, you know, referential, re referring to all kinds of art and music and stuff that I'm just not that interested in. I really like the narrative voice. At the end, I do have to say, it kind of fell a little bit f down for me. The ending was not as powerful as certain other sections of the book. Uh, it seemed to be a little bit more of the same and a little bit more of the wacky, what I call wacky slapstick side of things at the at the end. And so in a way, I was sort of felt, I felt quite justified in pushing through to get through it, even though I, d I probably did rush through it and miss certain things at the end. Um, yeah, but overall, a fantastic read, a brilliant read, and I will definitely read more of Gaddis at some point, not straight away. These are just very general comments, and I might come back and do a more substantial review. I'm not sure, because I'm not sure. It's a, it's a, It really is a kind of book, like, either you like it or you don't, and you know what? Either way is fine. Either way is fine. It's not one that I would push on people, because it is so... Um, you know, I guess it's a little bit sort of like Pynchon too, who I've never really, uh, the only Pynchon I've read is Crying of House, House 49, but um, Lot, sorry, Crying of Lot 49. I have not read any of the big ones. Um, so yeah, that's my thought on those big reads for this week. I've rushed through things a little bit, but just wanted to give you an update. What we're looking at for this week is being glad to be done with things. And so what I picked up are two books. So the one book that just came in the mail, but I think I kind of want to get started on it. Well, I'm actually, I'm still uh, reading, well, how it's still on the, on the, you know, on the Goodreads that I'm reading, The Empire of Pain, the, the history of this um, Sattler, Statler family, the opioid family. So that's still going. Um, hopefully I'll get back into it. It's a little bit tricky because I sort of feel like I want to get, away from the Kindle again. I want to get back to book books. So we'll see. Uh, I did start reading the German Grimm uh, biography of the Brothers Grimm by Stefan Matos. It seems to be going really well. And it's been a long time since I've read a German book. So maybe this is going to be it. And I'll have more to say as we go through. And the last book that is over there, but I guess maybe I'll pause it and bring it over here or insert a picture we'll see maybe i'll just insert a picture is housekeeping by marilyn robinson so the first book before the gilead trilogy 
which has been high on my list for a long time. And I thought I would give it a go for this last week of April before we get into the 1900 to 1950 read along, which I'm really excited about. As you know, I have two different TBRs, pilot possibilities, and we'll see which one I go with from that, from the, that group of books. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Leave your comments. Glad, glad that everyone is commenting and watching. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.